So to be, today we want to learn about uh, creating tabs as in user interface tabs, uh, web UI tabs from scratch in Svelte. And now we will be using slots, stores, and context. These are three concepts within uh, Svelte. So uh, the tabs, they look like, you know, you have tab headings like this, one, two, and three, and then you have body of the tab, the content of the tab. Uh, although all the three tab headings will show up at the same time, but the, in terms of the content, only one of them, the active tabs content shows up. So for example, here's uh, my live example. I have three tabs, one, two, and three. And if, if I ho hover on anything, it kind of turns gray background. But then when I click on it, it becomes active one and the background of that tab turns black, but the tab content shows up below that. So all the tab headings show up, but only one uh, content shows up okay so that's what tabs look like that's how they behave right with the so that's what we are about to accomplish using Svelte uh, and as we do that that you will learn a lot about how Svelte works more importantly how so slots stores and context work within Svelte so let's get started first thing we do to do uh, to accomplish this is let me just kill this uh, whatever this was um, Okay, so what we will do is we will uh, clone this pro my basic template that I always use, which is um, I used NPX program, which runs the Git program, and it it basically clones a Git repository, but it removes the Git database from it. So all you keep is the working files and working directory, only the source code. So I will get it from Bitbucket dot org slash spinspire slash swelled js template now and then i will clone that into my swelled tabs okay so that's the name of the directory okay now why do, why am i doing that um this is my own, own version of the swelled js template that comes from the official swelled js project but i customized it uh, it puts some of my styling, etc., and more importantly, it it uses TypeScript instead of uh, plain JavaScript. It uses TypeScript, which is a great thing. Uh, TypeScript support has been added to Svelte recently, and it's a it's a great way to um, write type safe code. So we will see that in a second. Let's get into our project first. We have to open our project. Um, we do that by saying, okay, let's open Svelte JS. Sorry, Svelte tabs. All right. And in in here we have TypeScript config. Everything is there. Roll up the, is there. It's all configured to use TypeScript. So the first thing we want to do is uh, we want to just run the build process, and that we can run with. First we have to run yarn install. You can run npm install if you like. I I'm beginning to prefer yarn over NPM, but if you don't want to use it, that is all right. You can always use NPM. Once you've done that, you can run yarn run dev or NPM run dev at that point, or you could use VS code to do it for you. And there it is. So VS code will do it. And there it is. it's running. Now I can control command click on this. Let me see. Yeah, see this? If I command click on that, it opens my my basic Spinspire Svelte uh, app template. And now I'm going to obviously remove most of these things from it because I don't need those things. So let me go into my SRC, go to app.svelte and get rid of this, uh, most of these things. You know. I'll keep, um, yeah, that's right. So now that I have removed everything, so that's that's what the basic template looks like. And I can also delete the testcomp.svelte because it's not being used anymore. Okay, so I'm going to now populate this application with tabs. So what will uh, tab usage look like? It will 
I mean, if we were, if we already had a tab uh, component, we would typically have a tab group. Within the tab group, we would have tabs. So we would have tab one, and then so that says a tab. And then I might have tab two, and then I will have tab content. This will be contents of tab one, and uh, let me just contents of tab two. Now, of course, there are lots of uh, <laughs> errors and squiggly warnings, etc., because these components don't actually exist. We can easily fix that. Let us fix it. Okay, so let me save this. Of course, it doesn't compile, as you can see here. It doesn't compile. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to create these components. To create these con components, instead of creating them in, because there are three of them and they are all three related, I'm going to create a folder instead of put the, putting them all here. So uh, let me create a tabs folder. So new file, and that'll be tabs slash tab group dot svelte. And then tab dot svelte and tab content dot svelte. All right, three of them. So tab group, what will it do? It will simply um, render its slot. What does that mean? Render its slot. It will, uh, what is a slot basically? That's where we should start. So if you look at my app dot svelte again, so it, this is the component called tab. Oh, uh, we need to import first of all, let's start importing. So, hey, did you notice how I have lang equal to ts? Yes, that's what that's what uh, uh, TypeScript support looks like. Uh, you can I cannot explain TypeScript uh, in this video, but um, you can when you I will post the source code for this video along with the show notes, and uh, there you can see how I'm using TypeScript. But in any case, let's say import tab from tab slash tab dot svelte and then duplicate it a few times first should be the group and the last one should be the tab um what's it called content right okay so now if i save this it at least compiles it doesn't show anything useful but it compiles so you know for it to show something we have to go to tab group and tell tab group to render its slot. And now we will talk about what does slot mean? Well, when we told tab group to, it basically means render your children. And it did render tab, these two tabs and tab contents, except the tab themselves are not rendering anything. So we're going to tab.svelte and then tell them to render your slot your default, this is the default slot because we did not give it a name. So nameless slots are called default slots. And as soon as I did that, um, I see two tabs, one and two. Now I don't see the tab content, so let's click on that and say, okay, you also render your slot. As soon as I do that, I start seeing the contents of tab one and contents of tab two. So this is what slot means. Uh, let's, uh, slot is basically the child content of so this is the component and this is the default slot and then this is the sorry this is the tab component and that's the default slot of tab components and you are telling in when you are coding this component you're saying render your slot okay now here's the problem uh, we want to put first two tabs in a different parent from the second the contents so in order to accomplish that, what we have to do is you have to separate these two um, these two tabs, tab headings, and the tab content need to be separated. For that to work, we have to come back to the app and where we use the tab, we have to say, hey, these two are in one slot while these two are in a different slot. So 
what we say is we say, okay, let's uh, wrap these in a div. But if I wrap this in a div, a div gets its own little, you know, well, we can do div. But I, I, I would prefer not to, to do div. Let's do a uh, span. So span and then give it a special attribute called slot. And we can give it a name, tabs. Okay, so this is the tabs slot. Now, these are also in a slot, but they don't have a name. So therefore they're in the default slot. So when we go back to tab group, we say, so notice the, the special attribute uh, slot, uh, tabs. These are also the children directly inside tab group. They are in a slot, but they are in the default slot. These are in a non-default slot named tabs. So let's now go, go to tab group. Sorry, not, not, not this one, but tab group, right? Let's go to tab group. And if I save it, if I save everything, you will notice pretty soon that it does not, oh, hold on. Uh, so I saved and it, it did not show the tabs themselves. Why? Because that is in the non-default um, slot. So we have to show that slot. So let's do that slot name equal to tabs. Now it's showing the other slot. At this point, it should start showing both the slots. You see how one and two are being shown. Good. So we can now uh, wrap these in a special div. Let's say div.tabs. So this is a div. And I can move this up. And as soon as I did that, these started, uh, they went into its own div. Right, their own div, and these two are in a in a separate div, or well, maybe they are not in any div really. We'll see. So yeah, we should we should put them in a div. So let's uh, say div dot tab content. Okay. All right. So. So now t uh, the bottom ones are in one div and the top ones are in a different div. Uh, we need to style this so that we can t tell them apart, right? So let's style them. And we will say that the mm, tabs has a bottom border. Bottom. Sorry, border, bottom. Is equal to, let's say solid black two pixel. All right, so, um, okay. My compilation is, is a bit slow. <laughs> this is pretty slow, okay. Let it run. Let it run. Okay, it's finished running. Good. So, so now I have a bar, border bottom. Good. Now the tabs themselves also need a little bit of styling. So I go into my tab. Where's my tab? Yeah, let's find the tab. And give it some styling. And here we go. Style. And I say, um, the tab itself, which would be, I guess we should have, we should wrap them in a div called tab, singular this time, and style it. And I say dot tab is a style of, um, well, as you can see, as soon as I put them in a div, it, they went into two separate lines. So first thing we should do is put them in the same line. We make them display in line, no, not in line, but in line block. And then we give them a little bit of padding. So padding 
uh, let's say one EM. So once I do that, you know, yeah, now they are far apart, but they are in the same line. Let's give it a nice little black border. So we say um, border is solid black two pixel. So now they have, now as you can see, there is kind of double border at the bottom. Uh, so we don't want double border, we want single border. So we basically say border bottom is only um, none. So that's not, so they don't have any border at the bottom. And now they are using the, the, the tab containers, the tab groups, bottom border. So this looks nicer. Now, of course, there are there is a problem. Both the contents of tab one and two are showing up together, but that's a that's something we'll fix in a second. Uh, now, at this point, we 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 have started. We have learned a, a little bit about um, slots, right? So uh, let me recap that. So. Um, whatever is in the child content of a, of, a, of a component, that is the default slot. And then if you want, whatever is a non-default slot can be wrapped in a single parent with uh, the slot attribute. And now that goes into the non-default slot. And then you can, you have to render each of the slots. The default slot is rendered without a name and the non-default slot, you just special specify the name. And then the great thing is now you can give it some special parents. Uh, you can wrap, give it some wrappers, okay? All right, next. Now now comes the interesting part where we have to um, activate tabs and show all the contents of only the active tab, not all of the content. Before we do that, I just want to give a little styling of the tab, tab content. So let's say tab content. Uh, padding 1 EM. Yeah, a little bit. That should be nice. If you want it, really, you could you could give them a solid border. I don't know if you should, but um, you could. So let's leave it. So uh, next, uh, we want to now add logic for activating. You know, when you click on a tab, it becomes active. Uh, so in order to do that, we could uh, do all kinds of shenanigans. We need to link this tab with this tab content and this tab with this tab content. And to do that, we could, uh, you know, we could achieve this through various means. But the standard way in Svelte to share data between components that are not parent-child and they are not you know, somewhat unrelated. Well, in this case, they're not, but uh, so if they're far apart, so then how do you share data with between them? And you use stores. Not only can you sh share data with stores, more importantly, you can uh, synchronize and you can uh, be reactive about that data and that you will see in a second. So let's, uh, what we will do is we will create a store in the parent tab group. So let's go to tab group and create a store. So script, and we can say lang equal to ts as in TypeScript, and that makes it TypeScript block. All right, so we want to create a store. So we say uh, import um, from Svelte slash store. What are we importing? We are importing um, store, right? So that's the store mm, no not store sorry it's, it's called writable writable sorry yeah so we create we, we get this writable and then now we say create a writable store and its initial value is nothing just undefined because uh, initially no, nothing really is active at this point and then we assign that to store and now we need to get the store to uh, each of the tab child as well as tab content child so that they can all be aware of what's the value of the store. And the store is going to contain the active tab. To do that, we can uh, use another feature 
of Svelte called context. Okay, so what what we want to do is we want to give a some kind of identifying characteristic. We'll call it key to this one, and then a, another key to this one, and the same key this guy will have and the same key this guy will have right so now this is how they are connected to each other you could you could change the orders of these i mean they could be in any order mm, okay so now obviously i'm getting a red squiggly because uh, these components do not actually accept such a such a uh, prop attribute so let's give them export let key so now the, now this guy has this and we will give the same thing to top tab content and let's save them all so at this point the tab group is creating the store and it's passing the keys oops sorry no not here in the app dot we are passing the keys uh, one and two right and whenever we click on it we will store the key va the value of the key into the store and so that everybody knows that this tab is active its uh, child content will also know its connected tab content will know and, it, and this guy will show itself this guy will hide itself and this guy will also know that this tab is active okay so in order to for all that to work we have to make make it a store because store is a synchronized data store but in order for the store to be available to everybody, we need to now turn the store uh, into, I mean, store the store into uh, a context. Let's see what that is. So import uh, from Svelte set context. And what we do is we say, hey, call set context. As soon as you create this, set context give it a name and the name is going to be active tab that makes sense right active tab key if you like and then put the store in there okay so that's the so we are setting the context now all the uh, tabs and the tab children uh, so let's do a get context they have to do get context they do a get context and they call get context with the same name active tab key and what they receive is the store and then we can say show me as active or show my content let me just let me just copy the same code into um, the tab content and now we say hey only if my key is equal to the value of the store so dollar sign turns that into a value and it also turns that into reactive value only if only if uh, my key matches what's in the store this active tab key context based store then show me so as you can see suddenly the content disappeared if I click on one, nothing happened because we have not added the click handler. Let's do that. So we say, hey, whenever somebody clicks on click of this, uh, this div, this tab basically, at that point, turn the value of the store, which is dollar store, into and assign it the key my key save it and at this point it's not uh, not quite working that's okay so let's let's see if this is compiling even yeah it's compiling but hmm, it's not working okay uh, let's see we first of all uh, we are getting a red, a red squiggly it says set does not exist on type unknown so it doesn't like that this is a typeless uh, so yeah we have we are using typescript but we're not using types as such so let's give fix that you can say all keys are of type 
um, string or number. So that, so we gave it type, and we can do the same thing in tab content that the keys are of this type. Then what is stored in the store also needs to have a type. So what we can do there is um, the store doesn't seem to have a argument of type unknown is not assignable to param parameter of self store any. So we need to give this store a type. Yeah, so it will be store will be of type writable, this one, and contain either string or number. Huh, that's better. See, that error or whatever that, that was, that went away. So now we can just copy the same exact thing to tab group. Uh, oops, wrong one. Yeah, this one, copy, and then paste it here. Okay, so it is because it is TypeScript, it it imported the type writable, and now I can use that. So now all the errors, uh, it seems. Ooh, wait, what, what? This is tab group. What the heck am I doing? Sorry, uh, I need to do that not in tab group, but in the tab content. <laughs> or in tab, yes, there. This is where I needed to do it. Okay, set context. And we now have on click. And we are saying dollar store equal to key. Why is this thing? Void is not assignable. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, th here's the problem. I, I did not make it a lambda function. Okay, so I make it a lambda function. And then now the store is writable it needs to have a type so we will say writable this is writable oh store is of type writable and it writable contains number or string Right, and we need to import that writable. Yep, that one. Oh, we didn't want to import writable like that. Sorry, this is a type. Types don't get imported like that. Uh, actually, we have a better version here. Yeah, why don't we just copy this? This is all correct. Yep, okay. Much better, and there you go, look at this, it's working. When I click on one, I see contents of tab one. When I click on two, I see contents of type two. Yes, uh, obviously they they need to be a little bit different from each other. So we could just say, hey, let's go into app and just to make them look a little bit different from each other. Let's say this is foo, foo, foo. And this is bar, bar. Bar. Hopefully that'll like make it look slightly different. Okay, here's foo foo foo, and this is bar bar bar. Okay, now at this point, as you might have noticed, that when when we when our application loads, it does not have either of the two tabs. Are, oh, uh, there is no visual indication as to which of our tabs are active. So let's make uh, add that. That's the most important thing right now. So we say go into tab, and we say, hey, when you are the active tab, please. Make your background a little distinctive. So we say mm, okay, class tab, sure, but then there's a special class. Class. Now you want to uh, turn on and turn off a, a class, you just make it a Boolean expression like this. And then say if my key is the one that is equal to the value of the store then I'm active. Now we can say, when the tab has active class, then uh, change the background color, etc. So let's say uh, background color is now black and the foreground color is now white. Save this 
and now when you activate a, a tab you click on it and it becomes you know reverse colored that now is so much better <laughs> so at this point we already have tabs working the only thing remaining to do is we have to um, default tab one of the top tabs should be default so something like you should be able to say that um, any particular tab is default you could say um, active equal to one right so now this will um, but of course we have to add this as a prop so export let active which is of type number or string right oops or string and we need to whatever is the value of active is your active is what will be the starting value of writable as soon as i saved that one is the active tab to begin with now that's because in the app we said your active tab is this one now in reality you will probably be generating these things from uh, data coming from some ajax request so it might be worthwhile to show you how to do that so we just say const tabs is an array and in the array you have more arrays first will be the title and then the body right uh, and then you will have two in the body of two so uh, instead, we could just copy this, like cut it out of here, and paste it here. Okay, that's not quite working. Okay, how do I copy this? Okay, copy and paste. Okay, that's better. And we could do the same thing here. Paste, except that is bar, bar and bar. This is of time of two. Okay, we need to give the comma here. So now we have an array and we can just run each loops so each tab uh, tabs as tab well now we will have two title and body and we can get the index if you want so here's the index and we use the index as the key right which will be zero and one so why do I do, need to do that? I, I just get rid of this and I, I use the title as data. Similarly, I and let's close this each loop. And uh, sorry, we don't want to, it looks like it doesn't want to repeat the slots. Okay, yeah, this is better. And now we do something very similar for tab content, right? So there it is, tab content and key is going to be the value of index and we can even have a handwritten tabs like so ku of tab foo and that's our own little like hard coded tab and we just have to have a tab related so we have tab content let's just oh, we have to put the tab like this foo the same key right and the title hopefully should match the name save it and now you have one two and foo you click on it one two foo now as you can see uh, the suddenly when we did that we lost the default tab that's because my key is not matching look my active key is one no but the first is now zero so this makes now this makes it default but somehow the body uh, is not showing hold on something is not quite right 
uh, the tabs each tab says title and body wait where's my body tab content yes oh there is no content inside that that's a problem that's the reason why it's not working so let's uh, give it a body by you know inserting body okay so now you have one two and foo okay uh, if you wanted you can just change remember the first to have a keys as in numbers zero and one um, but if but the third one has a key of string foo so you can do that too you can say hey uh, active is foo the third one is active by default and now whenever you reload this one is the active one so there you go that's your uh, tabs so in this we learned about how to build tabs from scratch in Swelt. we used slots we used doors and we used context and of course we used a little bit of css to do this styling for us so i will obviously store uh, upload the code for this it will be available on along with the show notes in the youtube video and they and it will be on a, on my public git repository so hope you learned something. See you in the next video.